The taste of the fruit is in the contact of the fruit with the palate and not the fruit itself. The apple comes up several times in the book and apprenticeship. The first time a child sees an apple, there's literally no way they can know what to expect. What it tastes like, is the entire thing the same color all the way through? When you first meet someone, it's similar with surface details. Are they tall, skinny? We meet their skin, their social mask, the version that lets them fit in to society. I like people for selfish reasons. It's because in the end, they resemble me. There was a psychology test where people were told that they would take a personality quiz and receive customized results to describe their personality type. Upon taking the test and each person receiving the result, they all thought the test was remarkably accurate in receiving them. But in reality, each person was given the exact same description that everyone else had received. Nothing was tailored to them at all. The researchers used words that existed between extremes that would almost grab anyone just being close enough to the description. To really understand the fruit that we have to offer, we must move past words and descriptions that aren't close enough. An apprenticeship or the book of pleasures is Clarice Lispector's only book to explore humanity in this way. A human being's most pressing need was to become a human being. I love this novel. I will absolutely read this again. I love Lispector. There's something about her that just pulls out this, this part of truth where we're not trying to dress up fictionality. We're not trying to make our lives into something that we wish it could be. Clarice is obsessed with exploring life as it is, but it's not realism. Written in 1968, but published in 1969, An Apprenticeship or The Book of Pleasures by Clarice Lispector was actually a bestseller when it first came out in Brazil. And as a person who's also looking for connection and a little thing called love, this is a book that meant something very special to me. It represents a part of humanity that only Lispector can pull out. And in the biography by Ben Moser, we have a quote. When it came out, an interviewer said, I thought the book of pleasures was much easier to read than any of your other books. Do you think there's any basis for that? Clarice answered, there is. I humanized myself. The book reflects that. But we follow Lori, a shy, reserved school teacher who loses her mother at a young age, much like Clarice herself. She grew up in Campos with plenty of money, traveling internationally to France and such. But it's only once her mother passes away that the family loses the fortune that she starts to realize that she feels unattached. She feels disconnected from humanity. And the book starts out with the craziest grammar, starting out with a comma and ending with a colon. The book starts out frantic, almost entire pages of single sentences running on as Lori is frantically panicking about what? About her search for humanity? About what it means to be a human being? Her body starts to calm down, as does the sentence structure. And that's where we really start to settle in. As she starts to engage, as she starts to engage with a philosophy teacher named Ulysses. It's much deeper when it comes to Lespector. It's this strange, this bird is going to drive me nuts, possibly the most important thing to me. Oh, I got to go yell at some birds real quick. And I don't just mean that this is the Brazilian when Harry met Sally type of romance. This is much deeper. I can just sympathize with Lori on so many different levels of wanting to fit in. Lori is defining herself against this intellectual man who I think's rationalizing the world. But Ulysses is just where this book shines for me. He's, he's easy to describe as cold. He's a philosophy teacher. He intellectualizes everything, including his relationship with Lori, almost acting as the Sith Lord apprentice leading Lori down specific ways of thinking and defining herself. But it's this almost psychological discussion, this dialogue that isn't normal to how you and I would react. And Ulysses is the engine that prods Lori, I think, to 
define herself, to not just be reactive to how the outside world tells her she should be, but to truly define her intersection of herself and her experiences. And I think that's very much how Clarice kind of explores romance in this novel. It's not the normal passion, uh, feelings that people feel and how they are pulled and forced to react to something. When I read the biography from Moser, he explained some things that I wasn't sure how to interpret just yet. He talks about in the first book of hers that she was a devout student of Spinoza and how his writings about how God and nature are one deeply influenced her. And I didn't know anything about Spinoza and started doing some more research. And I can see the far-reaching effects it's starting to have on her writings. Because let's think about this. If we're exploring love, romance, passion, you know, the title, what does an apprenticeship mean? It's almost like Lori is coming under the apprenticeship. Is it of Ulysses? Is it of God's will to love? She's traditionally had this view in a lot of her other books about nature and being one and primal incarnate being at end with a lot of morality and such that her Jewish upbringing had influenced in her life. To just react to emotions, the traditional romantic view, is something that I've learned Spinoza kind of looked down upon from a philosophical angle, because then you weren't in control of your life. You're reacting to a lot of external circumstances and things that you could never control. And it's not just a stoic look at life. It's about where does your humanity come from? There's a line in here about how Sp People can say, I love you, sparrow, but the sparrows can't say, I love you, people, in return. And while that's funny, and it's kind of interesting to think picture in your head as this bird behind me keeps chirping at me, <laughs> there's also something to be said about this idea of religion, and sometimes it feels to normal everyday people that, does God love me in return? And you see Lespector spend entire chapters with Lori asking these questions of the eternal God and finally giving God a shape, a person she wants to cuddle with and hold hands with as opposed to Spinoza's view, which is just being tied in with nature, being nature. So we can see how Lespector has evolved from a very primal and carnal initial student of Spinoza to starting to explore her esoteric views and what does it mean to approach God and approach the eternal? And the only way to do that, I think, is her exploration of to love. And that's what this book's going to explore, is where does humanity begin? Because some people view marriages as that idea of it's supposed to be representative of a devotional, eternal love. Whether you believe that that dies with your body or whether you are spiritual and think that it goes on to represent the love that you would experience with God in the afterlife. Lori wants to almost absorb Ulysses. There's even a quote in this book. She would want to absorb Ulysses completely. The desire of hers to be Ulysses and for Ulysses to be hers for a complete unification was one of the most urgent feelings she ever had. So to me, this is all leading to an experience that only by reading this book can you appreciate. And what I mean by that is it has nothing to do with spoilers. It's impossible to spoiler a Lespector novel. Is it has to deal with that epiphany. And if you've read a lot of James Joyce, you know the idea isn't like, oh, it's a plot reveal and now I understand why this character acts this way. It's something internal where we're judging and experiencing the world through a character. And it's only through Lori that we explore this story, explore what do we think our humanity means in terms of connecting with other human beings? Is it just transactional? Is there a romantic or an eros behind the scenes? The value is in the epiphany and not in the conclusion. We might, like an apple, look similar on the outside. But what truly differentiates us between being tart or sweet is that fruit on the inside. And only through pure, unrelenting, unabashed connections do we really explore the deepest parts of our humanity, which we typically think only our romantic partners get to see. This is a novel digging into that fruit 
digging into that core of what we choose to actually share an experience with someone. And it might shock you because Ulysses is not the knight in shining armor that you expect in a lot of romance novels. He's a human being. This connection, this relationship is a real relationship, expressing doubts, concerns, whether we're truly seen and what masks we choose to wear when we're out and about. That is to say, going back to the earlier part about the taste of the fruit is in the contact with the palate. Sometimes only through experience can we truly understand the real world. We talked about this a lot in our Henri Bergson talks on The Hour of the Star, another novel by Clarice Lispector. Only through personal experience and action do we have a definition for ourselves. And that couldn't better describe a Lispector novel. So in terms of the five Lispector novels I've read, this is the worst one. I'm going to give it a five out of five, if that means anything to you. <laughs> She's just fantastic. And if you guys haven't read her, I, I don't know if this is the best place to start, but I also don't think it's the best place to end either. There's so much that she has to offer where every single book Lispector writes is just this unique experience that I I don't see coming every time. It's it's like going against a grandmaster of chess. You see the moves, but you have no idea how they thought so far ahead, how they outmaneuvered you. It's like magic with words. Lespector just has this ability to entrance you, to pull you in and cast her magic in a way that you keep coming back 